in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah father give me an encounter tonight can you lift your voice and pray passionately and desperately passionately and desperately passionately and desperately give me an encounter give me an encounter by your spirit let grace come upon my life tonight someone give him let there be a cry from your spirit give me an encounter tonight let Saul become Paul let Abraham become Abraham let Sarai become Sarah let Cephas become Peter Under the shadow of your wings, your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings, your influence is all over me. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I am victorious I have overcome 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 I yeah yeah I yeah yeah I yo Mantles are falling here tonight Anointings are falling here tonight Graces are falling here tonight For the kings to arise For revival to return For the kings to be born For revival to return I have overcome I am victorious Sing it as a prophecy I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious Tonight, 
I want you to please listen to the charge that I bring before we get to the ministry of the Spirit. The goal of the teaching tonight is to help us understand the implication of the victory that has come to us on account of being in Christ. And let me beseech everyone that as you listen, please be sensitive. If someone is under the anointing close to you, don't wait for the ushers. Please take the responsibility to help them so that they do not injure themselves. If I ask that you bring them out, do well whether or not you are an usher you can just bring them and drop them and return otherwise you just help to nurse them there so that they do not injure themselves god bless you and please be seated you are being immersed in the glory of God literally his glory is resting upon you resting upon your life and you never live the same way not with his glory there. hallelujah yes for some of you while you are listening it will be unto you as it were in Acts chapter 10 the Bible says while Peter yet speak these things the Holy Ghost fell upon all them that heard him. The Holy Ghost quickening men, allocating graces, relocating men accurately in alignment to their calls, their ministries, their mandates. Seeing to it that the mantle that is meant for your destiny and your life finally arrives. Your own assignment is to be wrapped in your attention to be determined in your heart let your heart be open and that includes those who are outside i saw quite a crowd of people scattered across this auditorium very humbled by the passion and the desperation that i see in the northeast for when there is hunger within your heart he will always come to you hallelujah he says you will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart my final session with us i'll be teaching on the victorious life is a miracle and impartation service in addition to all that we have discussed in previous sessions i started yesterday night by discussing john chapter 3 the discussion between nicodemus and jesus helping us to understand that in the kingdom and in scripture there are two kinds of birth just a one minute recap very quickly that there is the natural or biological birth that which has to do with a child being born from and through a man and a woman and then there is the spiritual birth and that Jesus um, credited the invincibility the supernatural manifestation that would be found in the life of the believer that the only possibility to be able to manifest this godlike display of power, grace, wisdom is when you subscribe for the second kind of birth, the spiritual birth. That which is flesh is flesh and that which is spiritual or spirit is spirit. And this morning, for those of you who were not here, let me beseech you by the message of God, especially if you are a minister of the gospel, please do go online or if if the teachings are going to be made available please make sure you access the teaching this morning we dealt with john 17 and verse 3 this is eternal life that they may know thee the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent i told you that eternal life the manifestation of the reality of this life of god that we have received it has to go past the realm of just receiving to the realm of knowledge hallelujah you must know and understand god for the full import of the life you have received to be made visible and to be made manifest here and now hallelujah he says that i may know him and the power of his resurrection the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death peter said i mean paul said 
so it's very important for us to press to the knowledge of God and I said there are three dimensions as far as knowing God is concerned number one is to know his character number two is to know his ways number three to know his power hallelujah that if your life does not capture these three dimensions of the knowledge of God eternal life the manifestation of it cannot be real in your life the knowledge of his character the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger I told you the key to eroding fear and eroding error from your life is the knowledge of the character of God there are things that when you know about God no prophecy no revelation will dare or threaten you otherwise because you are secured in the knowledge of God's character hallelujah and then the knowledge of his ways the modus operandi of the kingdom then the knowledge of his power Ephesians 1 18 to 21 Paul said that your the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know is that true yes the what is the exceeding greatness verse 19 says of his power the exceeding greatness he wants you to know it the exceeding greatness of his power that same power that was exerted that brought Jesus from Hades back to the earth if it could take the son of the living God from hell back to the earth it can take you from where you are to any position and it says that you know that power and tonight we're exploring one more scripture and then with it we trust God to be able to help us in the name of Jesus Christ have you been blessed so far blessed be the name of the Lord the one who grants us all grace second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 we're doing 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 14 tonight. Hmm. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. One more time I'll read. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. The life that the believer has been called into is a life of victory and a life of excellence. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that we have not been called into a defeated life. We have not been called into a mediocre life. Hallelujah. Apostle Peter, well, mentoring those under his apostolic care here's what he had to say but ye are a chosen generation he said a royal priesthood is that in your bible a peculiar people he said that you are a people who have been called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light this is a description by peter now giving us a description of what is in the mind of the of God for the believer one more time but you are a chosen generation you are a royal priesthood he's telling you who and what you are you are a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 John in the Isle of Patmos began to document the things that were revealed unto him and in his discourse he had this to say and has made us unto our God he says kings and priests kings and priests and he says the implication of that confinement that office is that we shall reign upon the earth hallelujah when Jesus began to speak to the disciples helping them to understand their identity in Christ in what is captured as the Beatitudes when we get to Matthew chapter 5 beginning from verse 13 he begins this way 
ye are the salt of the earth he says and he says but if the salt has lost its savour or saltiness wherewith shall it be made salty again he said it is good for nothing except to be thrown down and to be trampled under foot of men the next verse 14 says ye are the light of taraba you are the light of nigeria he did not just say you are christians or will be christians he called us light then he says you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden visibility is your heritage in christ hallelujah he says neither do men light a lamp verse 15 and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick why so that it will be visible enough to give light and illumination to all who are in the house and then he leaves you with a final charge 16 let your light so shine not before spirits let it shine before men that they may see this is god wanting men to see not just to see him but to also see you that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven john chapter 15 and verse 8 says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples john 15 and verse 16 says ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you are we bible students and ordained you to go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain longevity of impact that your fruit should remain Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 powerful scripture Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 here's what he says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works we are not just members of churches we are not just pastors you know what it means to be a workmanship the tools that an artist uses or a doctor uses or a carpenter uses the workmanship of a doctor is his stethoscope the injection whatever it is the workmanship of the carpenter is his hammer that means every time God wants to manifest he uses men not things we are his workmanship recreated in Christ the Bible says unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them are we Bible students we are discussing victory now Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 powerful scripture the Bible says now to the intent he says that unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the manifold or multifaceted wisdom of God all of these scriptures attest to the fact that the believer is not just the, a weak individual hoping to get by in life and destiny that the life that you and I have been called into settle it once and for all and settle it for a fact that we have been called to a life of victory and a life of grace John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal Jesus said to kill and to destroy he says but I am come not just to make you Christians not just to make you followers of a faith practice that ye may have life and that you may have it more abundantly more abundantly more abundantly John chapter 3 30 and 31 the Bible says give it to us please John 3 30 and 31 this was John the Baptist speaking and he said he must increase but I must decrease 31 he now says he that cometh from above the issue is not he that cometh the issue is where he is coming from he that cometh a Taraba man that comes from Taraba is limited to Taraba but if that man happens to relocate origin he comes from above he immediately is invested with the potential to be above all he that cometh from above you reflect your place of origin you reflect the limitations of your place of origin he says he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly 
he that and speaketh of earthly things he that cometh from heaven is above all are we still together so the bible is clear as to the fact that we have been called to a life of victory as simple as this point is many believers will live defeated lives quoting scriptures of victory yet living in defeat because the consciousness we are yet to receive for a fact never feel guilty for your pursuit for a life of victory it is within your spiritual dna programmed in you that you walk in and remain in victory are we together yes sir and very quickly before we begin to pray i just thought to pen down four factors that help the believer that puts the believer in the position of victory experientially what is the basis of this proposition of a life of invincibility and victory upon what is our confidence standing you cannot just stand in the presence of principalities and powers in the presence of men who are being manipulated by wicked spirits and then make such audacious statements not in our wicked world today knowing that the whole world lies in wickedness it sounds like arrogance for you to dare say you are victorious are you aware of the kind of wicked men who are on earth are you aware of the antichrist systems and structures that have been networked across the globe to see to it that the purposes of god is thwarted and yet in the midst of it you can dare say that you are victorious my question tonight and that is also my first assignment is what is your confidence standing upon because the bible says we know that we are of god and the whole world lie in wickedness when the bible says the whole world believe the bible there is no region that is immune to the possibility of wickedness you travel to us you find it there back to africa you find it there your village you find it there you relocate to your city it relocates with you wickedness is programmed everywhere the bible says but it said thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph hallelujah are we together but you see the reason why believers are not able to walk in the experience of the kingdom life i'm sure that you understand my thinking as far as dealing with the matters of the kingdom is concerned in the kingdom the awareness of the possibilities that have been made available for you is not where the power lies it is understanding the knowledge and the revelation are we together not just of the possibilities but how to make them manifest the bible defines light something science has not been able to define it says that which makes manifest its light so the assignment of light is to take away haziness confusion and darkness are we together now no matter what you know if it is still shrouded in darkness light has not yet come information may have arrived but light has not come hallelujah you know that light has come because he sustains an impeccable ability to erode darkness in an instant john 1 5 the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not and in this kingdom we rise upon the abundance of the revelation that we have sustained galatians 2 2 i went up by revelation took more than desire to go up i went up by revelation i access virgin dimensions in the spirit by revelation i access power by revelation i access the experience of victory by revelation are you ready now four keys for you to build your faith upon because from the theme of our conference it says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith your faith there is the summation of your belief the construct of your spiritual understanding are we together now when the bible says your faith he's talking from a generic standpoint the summation of everything upon which your confidence rests on 
that when I came to you, Paul was speaking, I did not come in the excellency of speech. Are we together now? Yes. He says, I came in the power of God that your, your, your faith would not rest upon the wisdom of men, Sophia, but that it will rest upon the power. It will rest in the power of God. So that you are not resting upon shadows. And when situations and circumstances come, they sway you left and right. Most people think faith is merely just believing what God has said. It is more than that. Are we together now? The Bible says even demons agree on many things that have been written in the Bible. Satan has scriptures in his memory too. Yet he never will become light. So what really makes light? Is it the arrival of scripture? Because Satan has the abundance of it. He quoted it verbatim before Jesus. Yet he is the prince of darkness. Number one. What is the first key that guarantees the victory, the experience of walking in victory for the believer? Number one. The awareness that God is the all-powerful God. Please write it down. As simple as this statement is, ladies and gentlemen, you will never be able to walk in victory until it is embedded within your spirit man that this God we have come to serve and to worship is the all-powerful God. Please write it down. The first key that controls the experience of the believer's victory is the awareness, the consciousness that God is the all-powerful God. Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. Psalm 62 and verse 11. I have spoken. God has spoken once. Help me finish that scripture. Twice have I heard that power That power belongs to God. That power belongs to God. Nobody did an impartation for God to be powerful. Mm -mm. God does not increase in power. Where does it come from then? God does not submit to any other authority for empowerment. God does not increase in knowledge. He does not have the ability to learn. Who will be the teacher? Hallelujah. I have spoken. God has spoken once. Twice have you heard that power belongs to God. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Just two scriptures to establish the fact that the God that we have come to love, to serve, to live for is the all-powerful God. Our Lord God, he says, Behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth, not by your suggestion, by thy great power and stretched out arm. He says, and there is nothing too hard for you. Man of God, when this scripture becomes a revelation, you will stand and say that vision of a 5,000 capacity auditorium, even with 2,000 naira in my account, I know it will happen by a confidence that cannot be understood using the vista of science. Your, your confidence is derived from your knowledge of who he is, not some person somewhere who will help you. God uses men, but it comes from God. How do you stand before someone on a wheelchair you are watching the legs from your knowledge of biology. You are seeing twisted legs that cannot stand. Or somebody who is working with an aid, a qualified doctor who has been practicing for 30 years, has told you that his bones, probably he has bone cancer, and you have the audacity to stand before the world and tell him to stand up. You want to destroy your ministry? You want to destroy your children? How does someone look at you and say, if I may have at least, you will not wake up tomorrow and then you go to sleep early? What gives men this kind of confidence?
Now will Elijah watch the prophets of Baal? Ladies and gentlemen, those guys were not calling fire for the first time. No, they would not come on stage for rehearsal. These were masters of wizardry. They had mastered the art of manipulating the realm of the spirit, but not in the presence of Elijah. It, it can work outside of him, but not in the presence of Elijah. Elijah said, cry louder. Perhaps he's sleeping. If I were Elijah, I would be praying and say, Lord, when it gets to my turn, please. Even if I've offended you, let's talk about it later on. But for now. Mm. Hallelujah. God is all powerful. God is all powerful. Ordinary men encounter this revelation and it changed their lives. They dead life, they dead principalities and powers upon this understanding. Can I tell you, life by default will bully you out of your confidence. Situations in life as a preacher, as a businessman, as a parent, sickness will come to intimidate you. All kinds of things will come to intimidate you. That even when you cannot trust yourself, you will rest upon the fact that God is not scarce of power. He is the all powerful God do you believe what you just heard he that cometh from above is above all in our discussion yesterday Nicodemus came to Jesus and said no you are too powerful to be a normal human being he says we know that you are sent from God. This is the only reason why we will agree. No man can do these miracles except God be with him. God be with him. God be with him. Hallelujah. The first basis of your confidence is that this God that you have come to love and serve, he's not just higher than idols. No. No. This God you have come to serve is not just the most powerful. He's the all-powerful. Most powerful means that he came and met several kinds of power. And it's just that his was higher than theirs. All-powerful means every power, even manipulated power, was derived from him. It was only corrupted. Any man who found power on earth, the central control room of power is God. The power that the herbalist and the native doctor uses is simply a manipulation of the power that was invested in spiritual laws. No, Satan cannot have outsourced power. From where? A man can receive nothing. Is it not in your Bible? Except it is given. Who has been the giver that gave God? Where will they get it from? Who does he worship? Who does he bow down to? He was willing to submit if he found someone greater than him and he searched and there was no one then he swore by himself it's not he was he was willing to be humble to search if he found someone greater than him as god he would have submitted he just did not find it hallelujah so when that god sends you you have to understand what is backing you. The centurion looks at Jesus and says, don't come to my house. I am a general or I am a captain in the army. I understand what it means to be defended by a government that is powerful. I am a man under authority and I know the power that is invested by reason of the authority I am under. I say unto one, go and he goeth. I say unto one, come and he cometh. Jesus, you are not coming on your own. There is an invincible government that backs you. Speak the word only. You don't have to come. Speak the word only. And Jesus said, I have not found such faith. No, not in Israel. Who mentored this man into understanding? that the government you are as powerful as the government that backs you can i tell you god is going to give many of us assignments that human strength cannot bring hear me assignments that will scare you if you are walking in the flesh you will have to walk in this consciousness oh he has spoken once 
twice have I heard all power all power all power when Jesus resurrected he said all hail all authority in heaven and in the earth has been given unto me he said go ye therefore he never said go ye he said go ye therefore that therefore can mean the difference in your efficiency go ye with this consciousness if you just go ye as a preacher you are taking a risk what is before you pharaoh will not run away just because you are coming with a rod no it will take more than a rod for pharaoh to release israel he will ask you who sent you power there are instructions and there are things that god has given me and from a human standpoint your heart will fail you you will look stupid daring to take certain steps but when you know ah, that he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one you will be such an ordinary man but doing supernatural things things that will first surprise you the doer and then all and sundry as a testament that when God decides to back a man everybody you call supernatural is just an ordinary man who has found a supernatural God hallelujah supernatural God supernatural God when you know that God is all powerful obedience becomes easy because disobedience many times is a product of fear when fear dies obedience becomes easy for instance if God says empty your account it takes more than the ability to sign a withdrawal slip to obey that instruction it is a consciousness if a millionaire that you know comes to see you and all you have in your pocket is say a hundred dollars and he says please give me that money you will give it quickly because your awareness of that wealthy man you know that that hundred dollars you have given can translate into a house for you based on his benevolence so your ability to obey is predicated upon your knowing that that man is mighty hallelujah if you hear that the governor has called you and he says he wants to bless you even if you don't have money you can borrow without fear you say don't worry i'm returning back with joy you better give me this thing now if not you will regret later on what suddenly changed the awareness that a man of power and might and influence is sending for you how about the one who called you into ministry how about the one who mandated you to go to the nations how about the one who told you he will be there with you only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones But only a Yeshua will reign forever To his kingdom there'll be no end There are names, there are titles There are legends and tales of strength but only a Yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end when you stand before the challenges and the vicissitudes of life the awareness that God is the all-powerful God grants you such confidence to walk in victory can we continue number two Bible faith and the victory of the believer is predicated upon this too that we have been made partakers of his divine nature we have been made partakers please don't downplay these thoughts these is what must be constructed in your spirit mind.
man to walk in victory number one the awareness that God is the all-powerful God but it does not stop there number two the awareness that we have been made partakers of his divine life what does that mean we have been made to be partakers of his victory over sin his victory over death his victory over hell his victory over principalities and powers theologically speaking the implication there is a twofold implication to being a partaker of God's divine nature number one is the implication of your oneness that being a partaker of his divine nature means that you have come into union oneness with him the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is one spirit ladies and gentlemen these are my hands I've had these hands all my life from the point I was born another one did not come what suddenly changed that this same hand can be laid on a sick body an awareness that I'm not just a Christian but you have been you have made now to become a partaker that when you stretch your hand it's not just the human hand being stretched the hands of Jesus being stretched that when you speak it's not just the sound of the voice of a man that is being heard that in the realm of the spirit his majesty can echo through your voice and speak his purposes to the lives of men to be a partaker of his divine nature means that you have been made number one one with Christ and then number two is your positional advantage Ephesians chapter 2 please Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 6 I like Paul when I get to heaven I need to give that man a high five and a salutation I will say Paul so this is you I've seen you once in my vision but now I see you in your full expression the way that you are and give him a handshake and say thank you for helping us understand the other things Jesus said there are many other things I need to tell you that ye cannot bear them now it was Paul who began to reveal the many other things for instance you never understand through the gospel the implication of our being saved it was through the Pauline epistle that the full implication of receiving the life of God was explained So he says in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us verse 5 even when we were dead in sin had quickened us together say together one more time say together together with Christ by grace are ye saved then verse 6 your positional advantage and had raised us up together ah. we will rise in your name Adonai hey, you reign on high. we will rise in your name Adonai let's finish that scripture and has been raised us up together and has made us sit together count how many times together was mentioned from verse 4 to verse 6 at least three times together 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 carry that consciousness together and the Lord walking with them together healing with them together preaching with them together rebuking those spirits together carry that together mindset ah yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil not because the valley is not there thou art with me the together implication hold on did the bible not say two are better than one when you carry the consciousness of walking alone preaching alone doing business alone living alone that that mindset has already defeated you someone say together let it enter your spirit mm, together as I stand before the sick body you are only seeing one person but we are together 
is the word koinonia the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship the sharing together the participation drinking from the same cup he says let that consciousness remain with you don't just say I'm born again I'm a Christian please do not forget this revelation carry that word hashtag it in your mind not on social media together together pastor you traveled from your station to come and hear this one word together you can literally carry it as a revelation together ah together in the building plan together in the discipleship together in the crusade ground together whenever your heart fails you you remember together together alone i can fail but me and god cannot fail together there is no doubt that by myself i will fail but me and god cannot fail together uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Before you call me a failure, verify if I am alone. Preacher, why have you allowed the devil call you a failure? Yet he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one. Let me tell you as simple as this revelation is. Carry this mindset and you watch mountains give way. Elijah knew he was not alone. David knew he was not alone. Gideon knew he was not alone. Esther knew she was not alone. Deborah knew she was. All the people who were valiant, you are the only one who is still thinking you are alone. <clears throat> together. 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 Kali Barako Siata. Ah, together. David looked at Goliath and said do not think it's only one man that is standing here you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you together ah many of us came to you it's not only one person in one minute open your mouth and challenge every mountain that has stood before you i came yesterday alone but now i'm coming together together with christ together with christ doing ministry together winning souls together going to the nations together i started from taraba alone but together with christ Raise well, share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 